In this video, I'll be organizing the wiring under my train tables, showing you my new train shelves, and running a 2009 Lone Ranger Wild West Lionel ready to run O gauge train set. And we're starting right now. Hi, I'm Owen. In these videos, I'm continuing to build, expand, and improve my Polar Express traditional O gauge model train layout. In today's video, we're going to be working on organizing the wiring under the table. When I first started my layout, I didn't think that wiring was going to be a problem. I thought everything was going to stay neat and tidy because I was using the Lionel Collectors Club of America modular train tables and the wiring harnesses that are specified as part of that. However, when I started to add some non-Lionel accessories and lighting to my layout, I quickly developed the proverbial rat's nest of crisscross wiring underneath my tables. That's a problem for a couple of reasons. One is that it's difficult to know where a problem is if the wiring is not organized under your table. Second is that some of these wires are very thin and very fragile and it's very easy to disconnect them or break them by just bumping up against them. So I need to accomplish a couple of things. I need to be able to protect those wires from disconnections and breaking accidentally and I need to get them organized in such a way that I'll be able to easily troubleshoot whenever I have a problem with anything electrical on my layout. Part of what I include in every one of my videos is an operating session running the trains. After all, that's the reason why we have model train layouts. In this video, I'm going to be running a Lone Ranger Wild West ready to run set from 2009. This is Lionel O gauge run controlled by a transformer. This is before Lion Chief, Lion Chief Plus, or any of the other good stuff like that that was inexpensive. And so it's controlled by a transformer, and that's how I'll be controlling it in this video. On the upper level of my track where I'm running this Lone Ranger train set, I have a CW80 transformer running things, powering everything. The lower track, track one and track two, are both powered by the same GW180 transformer. In order to fix up my wires, protect them, and organize them, I'm going to be using this wire loom conduit. This has a split on one side, which you can kind of see there, and that split allows it to go over a wire that's already in place without having to disconnect the wire or remove the wire. That's a big deal for me. The other thing I'll be doing, in addition to using this wire loom conduit to protect my wiring, is I will be labeling everything. I started out labeling everything some time ago using Woodland Scenic's Tidy Wire Kit. That tidy wire kit includes some adhesive labels that you can put around the wire and then stick them together that you can write on what that wire is for. However, that adhesive just doesn't stay on very well. So for the labels that I put on now, they will be attached to the wire with a string loop and that string is not going to come off. So everything that I label should stay labeled and I'll be able to keep track of my wiring much easier. Now once I have this conduit around the wire, I have loops to fasten it to the underside of the table. They are plastic loops, half inch inside diameter, held on by one screw, which is an advantage versus two screws. Uh, I've got this conduit in 3 8 inch, which I'm holding here, and also in half inch. And I'll be using that depending on the thickness of the wires and the number of wires that I'll have going through the same piece of conduit. So. I'm going to get started and I'm showing you, going to show you what it looks like under the tables right now and then we'll move on from there and I will go ahead and take time to start getting it in the conduits. After I've got some of it organized in the conduits and labeled, we'll go in under the tables again and do an after picture, give you a before and an after of how this looks. Once we've got that out of the way, it's going to be time to run the trains. And in the midst of all that, I'm also going to take a few moments to show you my new train shelves. Let's start by taking a look under my layout so that you can see what the wiring looks like now. I think you'll agree that it's in serious need of better organization. Here's another look at some of the fragile little wires running under the layout.
A challenge that I've had on my layout is that my trains have gotten awfully long. Over the years since the Polar Express was first introduced, Lionel has periodically added more cars, new cars, and I've tried to acquire those as they've come out. As a result of that, I kept adding them to my trains, and my freight train in particular got to be very long. Now, because of that length of the train, as it would go around my layout, I have two grade crossings with signal bells on them. And the bells were ringing almost completely because no, more would the, no sooner would the back of the train with the caboose go through the crossing than the engine would be coming back around and going through again. So uh, I decided I was going to shorten up my trains and I acquired these train shells. These come from Glenn Snyder Display Systems. They're satin finish extruded aluminum and they're all made in the USA. I'll drop a link to Glenn Snyder's uh, website below and you can check that out yourself. They make uh, shelves that are specifically for O gauge, but they also make shelves that fit HO, S gauge, and other gauges. So uh, check out their website. You'll be, I think you'll appreciate what they have to offer. Well, I've made a start on putting the wiring inside of the wire loom flexible conduit, and I'm going to take you under the table and show you what that looks like in just a moment. A couple of lessons learned. One, this is going to take way longer than I thought it would. I'm talking about maybe a few hours for each of the train tables, and I've got a total of six tables that my trains are on arranged around this layout. A second lesson, this little tool that I use to put the wiring inside the wire loom flexible conduit is worth its weight in gold. This really makes the job much easier. On the one side you can see it's split open all the way along here. Once you lay the wire in there, you turn this and that holds the wire inside as you pull it along. This little section here opens the conduit and the wire goes down into it and then it closes behind it. It works really, really good. Altogether, I'm really pleased with the way this looks. In this first section here, you can see that the conduit's already making a big difference in protecting the cables uh, for that connect the accessories to the power. And it's going to only get better as I continue to do this. I'm going to start out by letting you listen to the music that comes out of this little mail car as it gets uh, set started up. As you can see, that's all controlled by the transformer and pushing the switches on it. You can watch the Lone Ranger figure in the Butch Cavendish figure popping up and taking shots at each other from the, uh, I guess it's a cattle car. This set was from 2009 and it is uh, pretty colorful and uh, it actually is uh, running quite well. Uh, it would have been great if this would have been in the days of Lion Chief or Lion Chief Plus so I could have controlled it uh, somehow other than just using the transformer. But I'm happy to have this and I enjoy playing with it nonetheless. A little bit of smoke coming out. Uh, headlight works well on it. Uh, I wish there were lights in the uh, mail car, but uh, you, know, you can't have everything in an older set.
Well, that will do it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to click the thumbs up down below, like this video, share it with anybody else you know that might be into model railroading. And also, if you haven't done so already, subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.